What's up, Fear fans? Infected are back is the major threat in this episode of Fear the Walking Dead. Brothers Keeper, stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Yes, live and let die, Guns and Roses. Uh, we felt like we had to open this because we thought it was very appropriate and very fitting for this very awesome episode. Natalie, what did you think? First oh thoughts? Oh my god, it was insane! I know, I know. Guys, this is Fear the Walking Dead. Brought to you by The Walking Dead Weekly at After Buzz TV. Season 3, Episode 12, Brothers Keeper. I am your host, Timothy Michael. You can reach me everywhere at I am Timothy Mike, And I am joined by my lovely Fear the Walking Dead co-host. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm Natalie Dyer. And you can find me at, at Natalie Dyer on all social media platforms. That's N-A-T-A-L-E-E-D-Y. E-R. Yes, this this little instrumental from Guns N' Roses is giving me life right now. I love it. I'm loving it. Thank you, Stephen, to our engineer for fading that out because <laughs> it's very hard to talk over it, but it's amazing. I love that song. Um, let's talk about your initial thoughts of the episode. What'd you think? The infected are back. The infe that's what I I'm I'm so happy that the that the episodes have taken or this episode at least is, have taken a turn back to the the infected because I felt like. We were going through all these other major problems, and the infected have sure. kind of taken a back seat. So yeah, we took a little bit of a break from the infected, yeah. and now they're back in full force. Yes, and also someone else is back. I was about in to say, you know force. what? We'll talk about the infected later. But right now, Troy is back. <laughs> yes, he is. Which we kind of knew he would be. I definitely knew. He would right. Be. Um, a little interesting though, because he he finds his way to McCarthy's outpost. Um, he's trying to clearly survive. Did you think that he would try to build a life there, or did you think that he would be going back to Broke Jaw at some point? Oh no, I was one hundred percent sure that he was going to come back, and I was also like fifty at least at least fifty percent sure he was going to bring infected. Did you really think that? I honestly did. See, I Natalie's better than me, you guys, because <laughs> I didn't think that at all. I thought yes, he would probably go back to Broke Jaw, right. um, but I didn't think that he would bring all of that with him. I mean, I didn't think that much. <laughs> that was definitely a lot. Um, I did think he was going to bring a good amount and then as soon as he fired the gun in the air and there was the sound of the infected, mm -hmm. I was like, oh no, he's going to bring all of them. You know, initially, I'm going to confess to you guys, I didn't actually think, I didn't hear initially the the infected snarling in the background. Mm. I thought that he was shooting the gun because he found McCarthy's outpost, he realizes that he could survive on his own so he doesn't need the last bullet to kill himself. That was my initial thought. Um, Ooh, yeah, no, I didn't think that. <laughs> yeah, well, because you have better ears than I do, clearly. I, well, okay, so first I thought he was doing, he was shooting the one bullet into the air because he'd found the grenade launcher. Right. Thing, which was a whole other better weapon. Mm, yes. In a sense. So I was like, he's like, I don't need this bullet. Like, screw you guys who gave right. me the one bullet. Right. Which is another reason why I was like, oh, he figured out he can survive on his own. He's got shelter now. He's got a weapon. He's mm -hmm. got kind of food in that tin can thing. It was kind of gross. Um, that was tuna. <laughs> it looked like cat food. It was tuna. <laughs> well, it looked like cat food to me. Oh, God. <laughs> so then we're back at the ranch, um, and the cattle is being put down. Did you mm. think that that was going to happen so fast after Madison and Taka left? No, I know cattle use a lot of water, but they can also survive, survive. quite a while. Right. And I guess the problem with TV shows is we have no idea what the actual like time, frame time is. span is. Yes. So... To us, it's only been a day or two since um, Madison left, which I think technically it really has because Alicia right. said she, her mother hadn't checked in last night or the night before. Right. So really, it's only been like four days that they've built, like, dug this well um, in theory. Right. So no, I would not think, let's kill the cows now. So you feel like... Especially because they know Madison and Taka are going out for water. And do you feel like they... Alicia at this point thinks that her mother is probably not going to be coming back anytime soon oh right yeah no she's yeah. I, I alicia's pretty much written her off in a mm. sense i think um i think she's gotten very used to people disappearing and if they show up great if they don't well that's kind of life in this world did we think it was interesting that nick was the one putting down the cows yeah a little bit <laughs> really because like, i just why I would mean... you think nick was good nick is such a lover in in so many ways senses and ways that uh, like with the exception of like some changes this season. Uh, so yeah, I, I didn't think it would be him. I just feel like they're doing a lot of comparison to him and Troy. So why not him be the one? You know what I mean? True. But I mean, 
It could have been uh, Crazy Dog as well. That's like, true. I so mean, there's there's a lot of people there who could have done it. Uh, I thought it was strange that yeah. Nick was. Well, I, I get hate... I get the comparison, but I also right. I mean, I I hated them putting down the cows, and so did Jake, mm -hmm. um, which is something that he obviously didn't agree with. But I feel like the the broke jaw in general is 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 struggling with finding a balance in leadership at this point. Yes. Um, and they keep hinting that Jake isn't a strong leader. Do we agree with that? Oh yeah, no, he's a terrible leader. Really? I don't I don't necessarily agree with that. I think he's that... not willing to make the hard decisions. He was being a little baby about the fact that they had to put down the cows and oh, we used to have 400 head of cows here and <laughs> and and this is just pathetic and and this is no, not a survivable place anymore even though we have a bunker full of supplies. He was he's not a good he's not a he's not a sustainable leader. Sustainable? Yes. I do feel like there could be worse leaders out there, which may make me say that he's a kind of a good leader because he is able to see both sides of an argument, which I think that's a good quality for a leader to have. Sure. <laughs> sure. I do think, however, Alicia <laughs> is, would be, or slash is, a stronger leader than Jake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, she definitely is. I thought it was interesting... I, I think everybody kind of writes her off as not the leader, as not the person who mm -hmm. will become the leader. Right. And yet, um, uh, Ophelia, I think, kind of sees it. But even when Ophelia was talking to Crazy Dog, and she was saying... Um, or Lee. Right, I couldn't remember his name. Yeah, was, Lee. They kept Crazy referring Dog. to him Crazy Dog. So yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I was reminded him, or like, in my mind. Um, she was talking to him, and he was saying, yeah, Nick's going to... He was hinting at that Nick should be the leader because he doesn't want to lead. See, I'm glad you brought that up because that was going to be my next question. Do we think that Nick would be a good leader? Better than Jake, yes. Better than Jake, yes, but not better than Alicia, I don't feel like. No, but I feel like Alicia is one of those leaders that isn't in the spotlight. So Nick's definitely forced himself into the spotlight uh, unintentionally. Right. And he's there now. But mm -hmm. Alicia does a lot better in leading through subtle manipulations and sort of just mm -hmm. like example i yes. would say yes yeah whereas nick whereas... they feel like would be a better leader because he has found his way into the middle of both the nation and which Broke I, ranchers. I think that alicia's probably more in the middle than nick is after that she's well the, yeah. yeah exactly she's the one kind of forging peace and moving forward mm -hmm. uh i think people just write her off because she's young and do you think because she's a woman I think that could also definitely, I, mm. I, I mean, I was going to say that as well, but yeah. um, probably the young thing is also a, a I very feel like strong that has factor. A, yeah, a strong Because factor, people yeah. don't know that she has grown up having to sort of be the strong one. Mm -hmm. And so they just don't think of her in that way. Right. They just see what they see now. Agreed. So. Start taking a step back, do we like Alicia and Jake together? Uh, I did until their whole little fight thing in the morning. <laughs> you, you did like the fight? No, I liked them together. I was like, okay, it's sweet. They're like, I knew it wasn't gonna last. Did you think? It, did you think it was gonna last? Their relationship? Yeah. I thought that it would have would have lasted a little longer than it did. Than it did. <laughs> yes. I, I I liked them together. I thought that they balanced each other out. Whereas Alicia sure. wasn't as is a stronger leader than Jake, but Jake can see both sides of an argument, I think, better than Alicia because he has a little bit more patience than Alicia does. Perhaps, Do but I, I think Jake has his head in the clouds more than like anyone. Which is funny to me because I feel like tr if Troy and Nick have such similarities, then wouldn't Jake and Alicia have similarities because they both grew up having to um, either protect or make up for their brothers? I think Jake resents uh, Troy mm -hmm. a lot more. And like, and maybe he did think, I need to protect him. I don't think Alicia ever felt, I need to protect Nick. Mm -hmm. um, I also, is it, Jake's the older brother, I yes. believe. Um, so he has that whole, I'm the older brother, so I need to protect him. Whereas Nick is the younger sister and just had to kind of grow into that position. And not... not I need to protect them because she was like, you're the dumbass who wanted this to yourself. Right. So I see that they have similarities. Uh, I also just don't, like, Jake hasn't had a taste of reality. Mm. He hasn't been out in the, the world. Right. And so, and that's part of why I don't think he's the best leader. Leader. Mm. Um, he doesn't have the full picture to see both sides. I agree. No, I, I completely agree with you. Do you think so. this whole plan of running away together with Alicia was a little bit foreshadowing of what was to come in the episode 
Um, you mean... Jake dying. Yeah. I I don't know how that would be foreshadowing it per se. I think it was more of just, like, the entire thing. The whole... The fight they had where it was, like, were you... Like, was, was your mother just supposed to, you know, get at Otto and your brother at Troy? And were you supposed to seduce me? I think that was more of a signifier that he mm-hmm. wasn't going to survive and their little fight than than the whole run away with me. I want to talk about that fight really quick because yeah. I actually loved that moment in their relationship because A, it showed a bit of contention, which we yeah. haven't gotten from their relationship nope. before. Um, and he did have a pretty good point. I mean, from the outside looking in, it did look like Nick was bonding with Troy, she was bonding with Jake, and then Madison was bonding with Otto to take control, sure. which, to be fair... Only maybe a quarter of that was true because Madison was bonding with Otto in order to take control. Right, and I think Nick was technically bonding with Troy slightly to take control. See, I think Madison was bonding with Troy. I think Madison I think was doing was double both. work. They were, yeah, she was, but I think Nick was also falling in line behind that. True. Um, I think I think he also found like a piece of himself in Troy. Right. Which we'll talk about later. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I... I, I think that he was sort of behind the whole, we need to get close to the family to, like, survive here. Right. Um, now, as for Alicia, I do not think that was her intention at first at all. I think it was just sort of a, I need a release. I need something to distract me, to, like, you're a pretty boy. You're nice to me. Yeah. I need some form of normalcy. That's fair. And then it moved into more of like, oh, this is a relationship sort of thing. And then it moved into, well, now I can utilize this relationship to not only save Jake, but her family. Right. And I think he just got mixed up in that thoughts of, oh, no, you seduced me. Then you fell for me, maybe. Right. And then this happened. I agree, but I do genuinely think that over time, Alicia did start to really like him oh yeah no I, I totally agree mm-hmm. i think that jake just thought she was coming in order to seduce him mm-hmm. like he he thinks that everything was malicious from the outstart whereas hers was just a coping mechan- i would call it a coping mechanism right um and so maybe he did sort of take advantage of her and she sort of took advantage of him that first night that's sort of it was a, it was a two-way two street. street yes in that situation agreed yeah yeah um speaking of nick for a little bit so Troy comes back as Nick is sleeping in the cabin. Mm -hmm. Did we think that that was a hallucination? Because I certainly did at first. I know you thought it was a hallucination. (laughs) You know I did. But I I didn't see it as that at all. How did you... I mean, I just thought that it was because it's just a little weird until I saw the same cuts and bruises on his face Mm -hmm. as were in the beginning of the episode. And then I was like, well, how... If this was a hallucination from Nick, how would he know the exact injuries that... Right. right. I just never... I was more surprised it was a hallucination in, I think it was last week's episode in the mm-hmm. hot box. Right. Or maybe it was the, it was the week before. Um, then I was... Then I would have been if it was Troy. I think that's what threw me off, though, because when when they went back... If we go back in the in, earlier in the episode, once again, Alicia and Jake... Or Alicia and Nick have this conversation where they're comparing Nick and Troy and... Alicia says they should. You guys share the same self destruction, mm-hmm. um, and then Nick says maybe I'm as sick as he is. Mm-hmm. Then they went right back. Then they went right into that scene where Troy makes an appearance again at the cabin. So that's why I thought it initially was a, halluc- a hallucination. I see. Yeah. I I definitely understand that. It's just not how I was thinking. Right. I guess. What did we think of his threat? Which oh the um that something's a coming. reckoning is coming from the desert. <laughs> I thought it was a little <laughs> over uh, dramatized at the beginning. This is my initial thought. I was like, oh, he's being dramatic. Like, what could possibly, what could he possibly do by himself? I mean, knowing Troy, I should not have underestimated him. But I honestly had no idea what he could have been bringing. I, I mean, I think at that point I kind of, I already knew that he would be releasing. Right. The Kraken. Just kidding. Or something. I knew he had some form of plan that was not only destructive toward, um, you know, I, I honestly thought he was sort of coming after Nick mm, a little bit. Right. Um, but I knew that whatever he was doing was going to affect the entire camp. I was also 
like fairly certain that it would be a horde because um, because of him shooting the gun earlier. Oh, and, and hearing them. Yes. Yes. So I, I had I had a strong feeling that that was going to happen. In addition, they have been too safe at this ranch for too long. So for I, something not to happen. For something not for particularly infected not to happen. Right, because the infected, like we said in the beginning of the episode, have kind of taken a back seat. They haven't really no. made a, a dramatic appearance no. um, as they have in this episode. Did you understand Troy's logic of Nick saved him, so he is coming back to return the favor? Did you did you get? that comparison because i certainly did not i was like troy i mean nick made it pretty clear that he was just doing what he needed to do in order to save everybody not just troy and in just it just so happened that he did save troy i think this shows how much troy has found um like companionship in Mm, nick i don't want to say companionship because that's what i'm thinking of um no that makes sense. solace maybe uh just like an understanding where Nick is very similar to Troy in certain ways. I'm not saying in the, like, I'm going to murder people, but I think that Nick is the closest to having any sort of understanding as to what's going through mm-hmm. Troy's head, and I think Troy recognizes that. Yes. Um, which is why he might be pissed that Nick killed his dad, but he's also... But he understands it. He understands it. Right. More than Jake would, probably. Mm-hmm. And... And he does see it as like, well, you did save me. I think Troy is a very black and white sort of thing where it's like, well, you saved me, so I'll save you now. But next time, no. Sort right. of thing. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Which I think that's him. why he, why, why Troy gets along with Madison so mm-hmm. so well is because Madison is a very black and white person as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, did you agree with Nick and uh, Jake going after Troy together? Um, yeah, I mean... I. You don't think they maybe should have had more people go with them, or <laughs> no? They just should have done what they needed to do, <laughs> not dicked around for so long. What do you mean by that? I mean that I really okay, I, guys. I really wanted Jake or Nick to kill Troy because mm. if they did it quickly, they could have adverted the horde, but they dilly dallied in the situation. But I feel like even after he shot off the last grenade with the grenade mm-hmm. launcher. And then they took the, they had this little scuffle and then they took the, the, the launcher away from him. Mm-hmm. They didn't do anything else to distract the horde from no, going to the, they so they were already on their another, way though. They could have fired another, they could have at least, at the very least, filtered off some of them. Yes. A good portion of the horde. Mm-hmm. They could have been like, hey, look, here's another loud noise off to the side going down this other road. Mm-hmm. Would you maybe like to go that way? <laughs> right. I think the writers could have done a little bit more clarifying because they could have easily been like, it could have been just a one line of, to be fair, we don't have any more grenades. Mm-hmm. That To be fair, though, I I really wanted them to just shoot him the minute they saw him with a grenade launcher after they saw the first sound. From that that high up? I don't, I do not <laughs> give a flying. You know what? <laughs> fly. Um, I, like, I would have, if I had seen that scene he had a grenade launcher and he's the one who's leading him toward him, my first instinct would be shoot him now, get the grenade launcher, and turn him the other way. Because that one that he just fired off mm-hmm. wasn't enough to keep him going down to the to the left. Right. So they could have averted it to the right. And it was only until but he shot the last one. And he was like, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you. And he's like, you're not going to kill me. And he fires off the last one. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What did you think of Nick wanting to talk to Troy alone? What did you think that Nick was going to say to him to change his mind? If anything. It was already too late. He couldn't change his mind. Right. So. Do you think that Troy is just like essentially a sociopath and a psychopath? Or do you think that the lack of sleep and the exhaustion had a play in what he was doing? Um, I think that the lack of sleep and the exhaustion made him delusional. Right. Um, and I, I do think that that had a play. It had a certain aspect to it but also he came up with this plan to lead this horde here Mm -hmm. when he had rest well he said that he hasn't slept he hadn't slept in two days he said he led him for two days and two nights right which means he wasn't sleeping but he'd already come up with the plan to lead him there oh i see what you're saying yeah yes no Um, no because he 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 literally went from being you know 
dropped off at the at the the whatever place for Madison, going to the the um, McCarthy's outpost, and then from there, he found the he saw the infected, shot off the gun, and then from there just went. I think he went straight to right. But he oh he did sleep though. He had a, yeah he had a fire. He had his rattlesnake. That's true. You know he. I'm just trying to give him the benefit of doubt, you guys. I mean delusional. I think you have a point with because I feel like. Troy never was a very religious or, or a spiritual person. At least that's not what the writers gave to his character. So when right. he was talking about a reckoning and biblical and a beast but is his coming. his father was. That's true. But Troy never was. So I think that him being I don't delusional. Think it ever, I don't think it ever says that he is not mm -hmm. necessarily. And to a degree, maybe he does feel like this is a reckoning now. If you saw that many infected, would you not think it was sort of a reckoning? But he also bring he also brought up evolution and Darwinism. He is a strong he believes in that. He sees this as a so he's at this point melding his father's beliefs teachings and beliefs into his own into his own with um dirt like with science because he is seeing it as holy moly. I'm sorry, I'm speaking for the character, but I'm saying <laughs> he's seeing it as holy crud. There's <laughs> um that's a lot of infected and like this is the next step of this fear of the walking dead has worked with um this is the next step of evolution mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. uh the second season we see uh with the with i think her name was maria sylvia no oh maybe oh you're, you're talking about the the housekeeper thomas yes. is like housekeeper yeah. yes and she was this was the next step in life well she had more of a religious point That's what i'm saying of it right it doesn't matter they're seeing it as the next step in life, whether it's evolution or whether it's the next step in life because God has told us that this is where we need to go. Right. It's They're seeing it the same. So it doesn't matter if it's science or if it's religion. Right. No, I un thing. I understood that. It just, it, it just, coming from Troy being such a, I don't want to say a one-dimensional thought-processed character because he, he's not. He's a very well-developed character. But in his terms of thinking about the infected, it never came off as religious or scientific. It was just, hey, these are people that I can kill. It was very one note for... For Troy? Troy, no, yes. because when we first in, were first introduced to him, he's killing people to see how long it takes for the infection to hit. Right, but I... to turn. But I feel like he was just doing that to kill them. I don't think he really cared about how long it took. If he didn't care, he wouldn't have taken such integral notes. Mm, that's true. Good point. So I think he did care. It was something that fast. It, maybe he's not a scientist, and maybe he wasn't doing it in a scientific like format necessarily. But I think it fascinated him, and he does see it as the next step of evolution. So if that's how you see it, you're going to learn how that happens and why that happens. Mm -hmm. That's that would. That's why it made sense to me. If you were in this position, with you know zombie apocalypse, what would you think? Would you think more scientific? Would you think? more religious would you think how would you feel about this entire situation oh gosh um here's my thoughts while you get your sure. thoughts together because i would think that it was a like a like a i don't want to say a plague because that has religious undertones but more of like a Wait, like why a, does a plague have religious undertones because you know the 10 plagues with moses and the the oh, egyptians well, and all I that mean, stuff. or you could look at it the scientific way in the black plague so that's true yes a, that's i mean it's a, I, I just feel like it's a very fine line between scientific sure. and religious sure. and i feel like i would lean more to the scientific side and say it was a, a virus or something mm -hmm. and that's that's where my brain would go but i'm I mean, I'm going to bring it over to The Walking Dead for a second. Mm -hmm. They learn that no matter how you die, yep. you turn. Right. You oh, don't have to be true. bit. Yes. So it does sort of seem like the next step of evolution. Right. So if you know that, mm -hmm. because very clearly uh, Troy did, mm -hmm. he's been killing people and they've been turning. Right. Um, you would probably more logically be like, oh, this is sort of a step of evolution. Mm. That's a good point. Like, no, it's... If you're thinking that way. I don't know that i would have many thoughts on what was happening besides outside of survival to be mm -hmm. honest yes i would probably go into a strictly survival mode like you don't care how they're here i just need to survive it right got it okay because very clearly there's not going to be some sort of like you know medication that can make <laughs> us all stop becoming like when we die becoming these things right it's going to be we now need to evolve to survive and live in this world where when you die, you come back. 
Right. Whether that means people need to evolve and whenever someone dies, you just put them down. Or you, um, and, and after having killed everybody else, or every, every other infected or walker or whatever you want to call them. Right. I would just, it would turn to survival. That's all. <laughs> I yeah. really wouldn't know. Did you expect that whole scuffle to lead where it did with Jake, Nick, and Troy? You with mean Nick with hitting. Nick hitting? No, I was yeah. so mad. <laughs> like, Nick You guys, she was, so, she was so mad. She was like, now I want Nick to die. <laughs> That's just so like, funny. You deserve to because you're just, no, what is happening? Because he, like, you could look at it this way. He is literally, he got Jake killed. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. He's definitely responsible. He definitely has he a is, hand. Like, he can say all he wants that, um, that Troy did it. Mm-hmm. But he's the one who did it. He's the right. one who knocked him down down into the pit where there was like, right. infected. And if well, from the beginning of the episode he was expressing remorse or guilt about killing Otto or, or taking a father from a son, then I expect in future episodes he's going to have guilt about his part in Jake's death. God, I hope so. I hope so too because, I, hope, I, I mean, so. I felt like that could have been executed a little bit better. Sure. And we could have avoided a lot of that if, yeah. like you said, they had just shot him when they had the chance. Right. Which... That kind of sucks. So we go back to the ranch, and they hear these grenade, obviously these grenade launcher explosions going off. Um, and they start making a barricade because of the horde. Mm -hmm. what, did, what, did, what were your <laughs> initial <laughs> thoughts? Well, first I was like, that's silly. But then I was like, <laughs> they're circling the wagons, which cracked you up. It did. Because go ahead and explain to people. Um, if you guys didn't know, pioneers who were you know, crossing America to get over here to the West Coast would circle their wagons at night in order to fend off attacks from Native Americans, um, which I thought was very kind which of ironic. the irony <laughs> yeah. in that state, like, just the irony of, like, circling the wagons and now the Native Americans are using the, to circle the wagons. It, like Essentially, it's, yeah. They yeah. were, it was building a wall around them so that they could be safe. Yes. Safer. Yeah. It didn't fend off many fights or like actual deaths but it would prevent them to a degree yes so so yeah. your initial thoughts were circling the wagon my initial thoughts and we are the walking dead weekly <laughs> now so we are going to be doing quite a few more comparisons but my initial thoughts went to the walking dead and when they had to fend off alexandria from the horde that was going toward alexandria and they set up well they already had walls in place but they set up these uh these cars and these trucks Mm -hmm. In front of the, the, the vans, I'm sure you obviously know. Um, that's where my initial thought was went to. So I was like, oh, the writers are, you know, kind of not, not stealing ideas, but borrowing ideas from The Walking Dead. I mean, listen, it wasn't a bad idea. It I wasn't okay. It, the, where they went wrong was having people standing behind the, like, RVs. The R really? Yeah, I think that's because, in fact, as uh, uh, Troy said, they need sight or like they need sounds things to look at and smells right if you deprive them of all that they just kind of stop right which to agree i to a degree i guess would kind of screw them because they would if my idea was that they should all hide in their bunker you would still need one person to lead them off right. here's kind of why you need troy though annoyingly you need troy <laughs> <laughs> because he knows these things he's done the research and he knows these things so Teaming up Nick and Troy is like a great idea in theory. Right. Um, because they have all this experience and this knowledge of the infected. Mm -hmm. The problem is you need to get the information from them. Right. And they're not, even Nick is not exactly willing to be like, this is how you do it. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> they're both the most survivable people in this stupid apocalypse. And yet they're both like the least helpful <laughs> in a lot of senses. I felt like the whole barricade idea was, was, a bad idea just because i i saw firsthand you know as a viewer of the show how big this horde was so initially i was like you expect right. these rvs or trailers or whatever you want to call them by themselves not even other cars up against them to mm -hmm. hold off this huge horde like i knew that that wasn't going to work the idea was that they would just walk by which is not too terrible of an idea in all honesty it's not a bad idea that they'll just walk by I don't know. I just took physics in high school, and I know that something with such force coming at an object is going to either 
obliterate that object or, or move it out of its way. Sure. And I knew that if they just moved one of those trailers, that was it. Here's what I was thinking, though. I think what they were trying to do is funnel them. No, no, I understand. I completely understand what they were trying to do. Right. But that many things coming at one point. I don't point, think they knew that many were coming. I know, that's I know. Thing. That's why they I was saying firsthand I saw. Was. So that's why I'm like, that's so why I thought like, it was like, it's, okay. it's a horde. It's a little horde. Okay, cool. Right. We'll just like do this. And yeah, I think they were probably expecting them to fail and to have them be pushed back right. at least to a degree. Right. They did not think it'd be that many that would potentially overturn um, the... The, the, the RV, right. Just taking a step back really quick. When Jake got bit, another, um, just a Walking Dead um, reference, um, is when they cut off Jake's arm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if if only they had, like, you know, a doctor or somebody um, that would be able to help him. Or if somebody was with him that had more medical knowledge, maybe Jake would have survived. They didn't even put a tourniquet on it. I have to say. Do you remember what I said? <laughs> what did you say? They cut it off right here. He was bit right here. It had enough time to travel up anyway. See, I didn't He even... would have turned. See... So they had to have cut it off up here, but they didn't. See, I wasn't even on that. Oh, when um, Herschel, Herschel got his leg amputated once he got bit uh, at the prison um, in The Walking Dead. But I didn't really, I wasn't contemplating whether or not the point of, of amputation, because I was like, even if they do it here, I'm sure, or right above the elbow, for those of you who are just listening, not watching, um, I am demonstrating, so you should go watch. <laughs> um, I felt like that was a, a far enough point for him to be okay. Yeah. But then they didn't even do a tourniquet, and I just wish that they had, you know, a doctor or somebody on hand that could, you know, help them. Or Jake, at least. I 100% agree. Um, but they don't. And also, I feel like they should have had survival instincts to tourniquet it. Or, I mean, Troy, at least. Right. Like, Troy had all that training. That's he true. He should have been able to save his brother, and he didn't. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree. Um, do you have anything to say or to add? Nope. I think we should thank our fans at home. Okay. For watching. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, do we'll come back to this in a second. Let's first thank these guys. Okay. Because I have a couple of last thoughts and we have predictions to do, but let us get through this. Okay. So I do want to go back to the to the to the ranch really quick, um, because once the barricade falls, Alicia thinks to go to the pantry, which I believe is something that they should have did in the beginning. Because if they had done that in the beginning, like you said, the walkers need stimuli. So they wouldn't they have just walked through the camp. Or they would have stopped. Stopped where, though? Right outside the camp? They would have stopped in the camp. So they needed That's something... That's not good either. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. They would need someone to, like, lure them out. Okay. Out of the camp. They wouldn't have been able to survive in that... Um... The bunker. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying. What I thought was cool was seeing Alicia, Lee, and Ophelia, Lee or Crazy Dog, um, fighting through them. Did you get nervous that one of them was going to get bit again? Yes, I, I was, I mean, sort of. I have faith that my girls are going to survive. <laughs> I have faith, so I'm going to let them, but yeah. Yeah. I don't. So they get to the pantry. That's where they're probably going to stay until the next episode. Mm -hmm. um, Troy, did were you surprised that Troy and Nick just stayed up on the hill? What were they going to do? That's what I was, that's what my thought it's process like, was. No, like, I what wasn't. would they possibly have done? Yeah. I wasn't. There was nothing they could do in that moment. Um, so. Well, clearly from the, the preview, they're going to think of something. Right. Um, I, let's, let's, let us go into predictions and then kind of shut off some, some thoughts. So let's go into predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. So based off of the preview... What do you mm -hmm. think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? I feel I'm like back to you for a okay. I feel like I feel like Nick and Troy are going to have to learn to put their differences aside and work together. I don't. I don't. I'm hoping that they do have some more of the grenades from the grenade launcher. They do. They had like five or six left. Right. I hope that they use those or utilize those to bring the infected back out of the camp. Um, because there's no way that the two of them could just fight through by themselves. Not to mention, I just need to point out that they used all of their bullets and ammo for, you know, fighting off the infected. And I feel like 
once Madison and and Strand and Daniel come, mm -hmm. they they needed the ammo and the bullets to make the deal for the water. And I feel like now they're not going to have enough ammo. Well, do you think they're going to stay at this ranch? That's another. I mean, that's another prediction that we. I mean, I feel like they fought so hard to keep it. Mm -hmm. Why not? But then at the same time, I just look back at The Walking Dead. Once the prison fell, once something falls, there's really no way to get it back. Right. So I maybe maybe the dam is gonna be the new the new location. Yeah. Um, I think possibly. I also don't believe that they used all of their ammo. Mm -hmm. I there's no way we did not see enough for like gunfire Gunfights. for it to have used for them to have used all of their ammo. Right. I think it was just whatever ammo they had on them they mm -hmm. went through. Okay. So you still think that the plan could the the deal could still be made? Yes. It okay. might not be as strong of a deal because a good portion of it has been used. Okay. But I don't like it's not gonna be as desirable of right. a of a deal. I right. Guess. I feel like another prediction of mine is that I feel like Alicia is going to take Jake's death harder than anybody else's because she was growing fond of him. They did have this kind of fight where he was questioning the relationship and I feel like she's gonna feel guilty, maybe. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be definitely a tough hit for Alicia once she's out of the situation. I think mm -hmm. she is very much the whole, like, what do we do to survive now? Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, I think she'll take the hit. I don't think it'll be very visible to everybody else. No. She's always been a very internal person when it comes to that kind of thing. Right. Mm. I'm glad Alicia and Ophelia are back together. Yeah. I was like, dream team's back. Yes. <laughs> um, but... I guess what I think, I think what's going to happen is, like I said, Troy and Nick are the most, they're, they're the most knowledgeable of the infected. So mm -hmm. I think they are going to find a way to get them out. I worry about what Alicia encounters in the bunker. Because she's in the bunker when she encounters an infected. So I don't know how they did. Maybe how somebody they got, got in bit. Or, or something like that. Right. Um, so I think for her right now, the bigger threat is in the bunker and mm -hmm. she doesn't know it. I think that we do, but right. I think doesn't. that not only do they have to be worried about an infected as the preview showed um, in the bunker, but they also have to worry about, you know, their stress, the stress levels were at a minimal before and they were already like butting heads with it, with the nation and the ranchers. Now the stress levels are at a, like a heightened state. Yeah. So I feel like they also have to worry about that coming into play. At the same time, they're all together in this dire situation. Once again, another dire situation where they need to, to come survive. together. So. Yeah. So you think that they're going to come together? I do. Okay. Um, we have some shout outs. Yes. Let's do shout outs. Uh, especially because for um, cat get. Had to get H. I'm really bad at names, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, she says, I think when Ophelia sees her father, she may turn down Taco for any dangerous missions. I believe that uh, that is the last thing she wants to do, disappoint her father. Um, so I agree. I think that's a great prediction. I agree as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have Jay Snowden who says, hey, guys, I love this panel. I'm totally leaning towards more towards fear, the wa uh, fear than The Walking Dead, which I never thought would happen. Um, I like your insights and predictions and think they're very smart. Uh, I'm really into this, the powerful female characters on the show. Us, too. Well, I am. I'm speaking for both <laughs> of us right now, but I am as well. I'm so about it. Um, I like how, compared to The Walking Dead, how this show deals with society breaking down and how they're trying to rebuild. And they ask, do we think we'll ever have a crossover with the original show? I'm hoping that would be the case. I'm, I'm hoping... By the end of this season, I don't exactly know how mm -hmm. in what because they're literally on opposite coasts, literally, uh, literally opposite. Like they're on the northeast, they're on the southwest. So it's like I don't exactly know how that would happen this season, but I do need if it's going to happen, I do need for the writers to make right. that crossover at some point sooner rather than later. We also need to thank our wonderful sponsors for the show yes. that allow us to come in every week and talk about The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. um, and this week, it is The Good Doctor. A new medical drama is coming to ABC on Monday nights this fall called The Good Doctor. It's a story of a young man with autism and savant syndrome named Sean Murphy who becomes a surgical resident at a prestigious hospital. Uh, this young doctor exhibits genius level skills and is capable of seeing things in ways that no one else can. I'm kind of thinking it's a lot like House. I agree, but hopefully younger. Younger and yes. hopefully with a lot less bad, bad, uh, like incorrect 
you know how a house oh, was always medical wrong. Dr- yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Until the last one when he was right. Um, <laughs> Anyway, alone in the world and unable to personally connect with those around him, Sean uses his remarkable remarkable medical gifts to save lives and challenge the uh, skepticism of his colleagues. Uh, the character's unique medical condition adds a new dimension to the genre. I'm excited, actually. I'm excited Sounds about really this, too. Good. The more I've I'm been, reading it. Yeah. It's coming from the producing team of David Shore, the man behind the ha- hit, hit, hit drama House. House, there you go. <laughs> as well as <laughs> Daniel Day Kim, who previously starred on Lost. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Which, so two great shows. Yes. Um, the series stars Freddie Highmore from Bates Motel as Dr. Sean Murphy, uh, Richard Schiff uh, from The West Wing, and Hill Harper from CSI and Homeland round out a diverse and exceptional cast. Uh, it's one of the most anticipated series of the new fall season, and it's on ABC on Monday nights, you guys. Yes, it is definitely on my DVR for Monday nights because I love a Freddie Highmore because I remember him in August Rush as a little boy, right? And I followed his career, and I'm so glad, and I'm and I'm excited to see him doing the show because a I love medical dramas because I love I loved House, yeah. love Grey's Anatomy, right? So I'm excited to see this new twist on The Good Doctor. Me too. I don't have DVR. I don't have that. That I, but I do have Hulu. So you do have I will Hulu. Watch so it you, on Tuesdays. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Back to The Walking Dead Weekly and Fear the Walking Dead. Thank you uh, for those kind words from our sponsors. Yeah. And um, do you have any last minute predictions? Uh, I don't, but if you guys do, definitely leave us comments in our, our videos and we will read them yes and thank you guys you for thoughts? for tuning in um and tweeting us we do read your tweets we try we to do? respond to them as much as we can mm-hmm. um we do love them um we're gonna try to get out some new um some new polls um on twitter so stay yeah. tuned for those we're gonna try out those guys um and we would love to hear your feedback on those your thoughts so we can shout you guys out um like we did tonight um thank you guys for tuning in this was uh, fear the walking dead season three episode 12 natalie where can they find you you guys can find me at, at Natalie Dyer, that's N-A-T-A-L-E-E-D-Y-E-R on all social media platforms. And I am Timothy Michael. You can find me everywhere at I am Timothy Mike. Thank you guys once again for tuning in for Fear of the Walking Dead slash The Walking Dead Weekly. And we will see you guys next week. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.